Today morning, I left the house at exactly 9.23 a.m. I was so excited because of this session that I'll be having this evening. As I walked out of the house with an ounce in my bounce and a bounce in every ounce, I was so excited. I took off, I took off got into my car, and arrived in my office at exactly 9.57. I took the elevator, but I was a bit surprised that there was no one else to board the elevator. That seemed very unusual. I pressed the button to our floor, and that is 12th floor. Then another funny incident occurred. Instead of the button lighting red, it lighted in blue. Immediately the door closed, there was some different kind of light, sort of a white light. When the elevator opened on my floor, I was not, I was excited by what I saw and I was really shocked. It was all just white light. And there were two aliens, green, and they had some lab coats waiting for me. Before I realized what was happening, a phone jumped out on one of the breast coats of one of these aliens. It flew, came close to my face, and commanded me, Maxwell, be a steel. A flash, and that's the last thing I could remember. I don't know how long, but later, I opened my eyes to find myself in this spaceship, more like what Star Trek had. I thought this was make-believe. I realized I was in a bed, and there was this funny alien poking all over my body. There seemed to be another alien who seemed like the boss, was just looking and observing. They did some tests and I, I found it quite scary. I had the lead doctor shout, why didn't you tell me he eats njahi every morning? I was even shocked. They know my favorite food and in my favorite mother tongue, he said, this man can no longer be used for the experiment. With that, he walked out of the room. The three remaining aliens, who supposedly maybe were doctors, looked at each other and asked, so what do we do? They said, well, we'll take him back, but we need to go and finish the other errands. Just after a while, I blacked out again, woke up to open my eyes and yet realized I was in a different planet. This happened like three times. And every time I opened my eyes, I was in a different planet. I realized that we traveled through different galaxies. Eventually, I found myself dropped in the same elevator and someone pushed uh, button number 12. Again, the lift shot up. I was scared, but this time the lift opened and I saw our usual corridor. I walked in, I saw the receptionist, Bewildered, scared, I asked her, what time is it? She told me, 5.33 p.m. She asked me why. I wanted to tell her, but I thought, hmm, would she believe me? I told her, I have a summer meeting and I need to prepare. Toastmasters and guests, that is an example of a tall tale. In my words, I will define a tall tale as I will define the tall tales in the definition of Toastmasters. It is the story or representation with unbelievable, exaggerated elements and occurrences or experiences related as if they were true or factual. Unbelievable, exaggerated elements, elements and occurrences or experiences related as if they were true or factual. A tall tale still follows the other requirements of a normal speech. For instance, you need to have an introduction, speech structure, content development, and so on and so forth. Your tall tale should have believability. It should not be a complete fantasy, fable, or fictitious tale. There must be an element of truth in it. Like all good stories, a tall tale should include a character that comes to the fore with specific objective or agenda. These characters Living or non-living can be equipped with extraordinary abilities or supernatural powers, like Superman or Iron Man or the Fantastic Four. To make 
you told tales interesting, intriguing, and captivating, it would be wise to consider the use of the following. Number one, twists and turns. Number two, rhetorical devices. Number three, humor. Number four, vocal variety and poses. You see, unexpected twist and turn in your narration are the real kicker. Pack the audience in your bus, drive in one direction, and when they least expect, land a punchline in another direction. It is a great tool in humor speeches and much more in tall tale speeches. So always weave practically a twist or two in your tale. Let's move on to rhetorical devices. Example of rhetorical devices include similes, alteration, allusion, amplification, metaphor, onomatopoeia, so on and so forth. I know we, are all, we all know them. Being a foodie, a lover of food, I hope that word has found its way in the dictionary. I have always compared rhetorical devices to spices. You see, good food is bland without them. Good food is good, but spicy food is astounding. It is spices that cause all the taste buds in your tongue to come to life and stand at attention. And I believe that is the same, and it is true of tall tales or any other speeches for that matter. Speeches can work without them, but it is these rhetorical devices that bring the spice to life. In the context of dining, the proper use or, right, or the adroit use of rhetorical devices will not only leave your diners full and excited, but reminiscing on what it is you presented. Apply the same in your tall tales. You could pick one and exaggerate it too. For example, let me give you a good example. Allusion, we all know what an allusion is, right? It refers to a place or a person. So there's this quote we know. I cannot change so fast, I'm not Superman. But in a tall tale, I can put it this way. I can change fast, I am Superman, right? Let me give you another example in the use of an anaphora. If you prick us, do we not bleed? But in a tall tale, I can say, if you prick us, we do not bleed, right? Remember, tall tales is all about exaggeration. Exaggerate the stories, exaggerate your ritual devices, exaggerate your, your, your humor phrases, exaggerate, exaggerate, right? Let's move on to humor. Humor will work very well if it is well incalculated and well calculated. Remember, a tall tale is not a humorous speech, but humor will always add that punch for you. Lastly, and not the least, vocal variety and pauses. In my, in my tall tale sample, the phone spoke in a different voice. The best way to bring a variety of voices is to use dialogue in a speech. That gives you the opportunity to talk differently, to increase your pace or slow it, to speak high or to speak low. So always look for a way to involve dialogue in your tall tale. For pauses, kindly remember to allow your audience to laugh when they need to. Use pauses when you're moving from one alteration I mean, one exaggeration to another, one idea to another, or when you want to give us that punchline. Ladies and gentlemen, go, interest us, intrigue us, and captivate us. Back to you, Madam Toastmaster.